So now we're going to talk about associated persons. That basically is anyone who is registered and associated with a FINRA member firm, which is what we're all, I hope, it's, if you're in this class, it seems to be a good reason why you're here, we're hoping to become associated persons. The definition of registered versus non-registered person, and we discussed this several times actually because it's diff different ways, different ideas, different views on it. But a registered person is anyone involved in a firm's investment banking or securities business. They must be a registered representative with FINRA. That is what you want to be. You want to be involved in the securities business. Anyone dealing with cash or any of the original books of entry must as well be registered. These duties could include supervision, solicitation, or training of persons associated with the member. All of those must be registered. Non-registered persons are limited to clerical, ministerial, or janitorial type positions. They may not recommend or solicit business. People who are just in human resources, just in payroll, just doing the, the cleanup, things like that, just processing paperwork, those do not need to be registered persons. The permitted activities of registered and non-registered persons, well, registered persons can handle customer accounts. We can make recommendations. We can be paid commissions. We can split commissions with other registered reps of the same member firm. We can't split with outside reps, but if we're registered to the same firm, we can. I actually had a student a while ago, actually, who wanted to become a registered rep. I believe he was either an accountant or a state attorney. I forget which one he was. But the reason he wanted to become a rep wasn't so that he could solicit business. He had no interest in doing that. He liked being either, again, an attorney or an accountant. I forget which. But what he did is he had a deal with his CFP where he would be able to refer his clients, either estate clients or accounting clients, whichever one he was, to this CFP. And the CFP would then write the business. And if he was registered at the same firm as his, as his certified financial planner, as his uh, registered rep was, then that registered rep could split commissions when he referred them. That's why he did it. It's a reason. Non-registered reps are limited again to clerical, ministerial, or janitorial type positions. They cannot split commissions. They must be registered in order to split commissions. Ineligibility for membership or association with a FINRA member firm. The idea of membership is basically refer is, is referencing only firms, only the corporations. The association is what we do as normal natural persons. We associate with a member firm. Firms that do not meet certain financial requirements or have natural persons with the experience necessary. You may see as a list of statutory disqualification financial um, liquidity issues where they don't have much money or they don't have experience. But that is only with the firms where that's a problem. Because if you think about it, if to be a registered rep, you need experience being a registered rep, which you can only get if you're a registered rep which to do you need experience. You can see there's a problem and there's not likely to be very many registered reps for long. But with a firm, that's the idea of if you don't have experience, you can't let you be a firm. Same idea with the financial requirements. These firms, these corporations have liquidity needs, have minimum net capital requirements. People don't. There was a movie that came out many years ago called The Pursuit of Happiness with Will Smith where he played, it was based on a true story of someone starting out in the financial industry. And it shows him studying while living in a ba public bathroom. Because that's where he and I think daughter, may have been son, were living. Because they didn't have a house while he was studying to get into this business. So clearly the financial requirements are not, again, for natural persons. Individuals are only going to be ineligible with a statutory disqualification. Things like a felony in the past 10 years, misdemeanor involving money, lying on the application, inability to prove citizenship. Got to be a U.S. citizen to be a registered representative. Background checks are going to be performed because firms are responsible for investigating the good character, business reputation, qualifications, and experience of applicants. It can't simply be a test. It's not just simply passing a test that makes you uh, qualified to be a rep. You got to have the the reputation, the uh, uh, the the qualifications, the experience. That you can't be. That you've had had a job. You've got to pass a background check. Again, you don't need experience in the industry, but you got to have like good character. You've got to. You, you can't have been like uh, 
bum begging for a while or something like that. And they're going to check your your um, work history. They're going to check your um, living history, where you've lived and things like that. And we'll try to make reasonable effort to review the most recent form U5. U4 is the for, for, U4 is the for, form. Got to get these right because we've got firms, four, and form. <laughs> U4 is the form we fill out when we're trying to apply to a firm to get membership. Form U5 is the form we fill out or gets filled out when we leave, when we either quit or when we're fired. This industry, if you've ever heard of that in, in TV and movies where someone's doing a horrible job at, at their job that they hate and the boss calls them in and goes, we're going to fire you. And the employee goes, you can't fire me, I quit. Well, in, in this job, you can't quit if we're going to fire you. That's the slight difference here. If someone, if there's a process going through where U5 is being done, the rep cannot just quit to try and stop that. It's going to get filed and they are going to be fired. It's a full 10-year employment history check in the backgrounds. Fingerprinting. Any, everyone and anyone in the business gets fingerprinted. Anyone who is a registered rep, anyone who touches money, anyone who deals with original books of entry, all are fingerprinted. Exception for those, again, not involved in security sales. They don't handle or access cash or securities. They don't supervise employees engaged in these activities. None of that. Then they don't need to have their fingers printed. Statutory disqualifications we have mentioned a little earlier, but basically if any person has been expelled or suspended and is denied trading privileges or is subject to an order of the commissions for such action, that commission, by the way, is the SEC, the Security and Exchange Commission. For firms having been expelled, suspended by another SRO, another self-regulatory organization, if you were suspended by the MSRB, FINRA isn't likely to let you in subject to an SEC order denying, suspending, or revoking in registration, willfully filing false or misleading membership applications. That's known as lying. Willfully filing false or misleading, that's a lie. Don't lie on these applications. You're going to get in trouble. For individuals made willful rep misrepresentations on registration application, lying. Felony conviction in the past 10 years or misdemeanor involving securities or money in the past 10 years. Again, remember for firms, if they don't have experience, five people who have never been involved in securities could certainly start trying to become registered reps. They couldn't, the five of them, form a, form a broker dealership with no experience. Someone who's got literally zero or even negative net worth, they owe more money than they have, could become a registered rep. Many people I know who started in the business started when they were maybe not negative, but certainly not, above, not, not a lot above positive, especially when you think about student loan debt and you start taking that out. A lot of people are negative net worth. It doesn't matter for an individual. For a firm, it does. Firms have to have a certain minimum net capital to be accepted as a broker-dealer. Failing to register an associated person. The failure of any member to register an employee who should be registered, who is dealing with securities, who is dealing with money, who is dealing with um, recommendations. If they must register as a, rep, as a registered rep and the firm fails to do so, that may be, deep, in deep, that may be deemed conduct inconsistent with equitable practices of trade and may suffer certain disciplinary action. They likely would. And those actions could certainly go from fines to potentially expulsion if it seems to be like a serious uh, major problem within the firm. There are state registration requirements as well. All broker dealers and their reps must be registered in each state or exempt from registration in that state. Like no place of business, only transacts with institutions, only exempted securities or transactions. I'm not licensed in California. I have no place of business in California. And I guess to a certain degree, I only transact with institutions. I mean, I have zero clients and zero institutions, but with zero on both sides, I guess I'm only doing that one, even though it's zero. Sort of a weird logic in there, but yeah, why would I register in California? I have no business in there. But these are known as the blue skies laws. Anything doing with state registration and state securities rules are known as the blue skies laws. They fall under the Uniform Securities Act, the USA. 
I love, I've always loved this cartoon. Your grandmother sent you five dollars for your birthday. You want to put it in the bank and for a very wait for a very long time, and someday it'll be worth two dollars. <laughs> always liked that cartoon. That brings us to this fir the, the end of this first unit on associated persons. We are going to get a little more into it in the next unit as well. I simply want to try and keep these units uh, shorter than uh, if I combined them. Uh, but we will be getting into more of that, so I would recommend watching that shortly. But I will see you then. Hope you enjoyed this.